Welcome to Women's Issues Forum. This is the third in a series of five forums that focus on the topic of empowerment, we shall be heard. Today, we will talk about mental health and women's empowerment. I am Mary Lynn Parker. This forum is a community outreach project of the Manatee County Branch of the American Association of University Women, or AAUW. The mission of AAUW is to promote equity for all women and girls through advocacy, education, philanthropy, and research. We have two desired outcomes for today's forum on mental health and women's empowerment. Our goal is to contribute to decreasing any remaining stigmas about mental health issues. And secondly, to help women know where we can get help in our community for ourselves and others. We have with us today four women in our community who are mental health professionals and a volunteer. Welcome with me, Dr. Jennifer Swanson, She's a medical doctor with Premier OBGYN of Manatee County with Dr. Erin Sudbury. We also have Ms. Melanie Tevis Bell. She's a licensed marriage and family therapist and vice president of outpatient services at Manatee Glens. Susan Schusler is a registered dietitian, registered nurse, and a certified diabetes educator also with Manatee Glens Wellness, and is the Manatee Glens Wellness Coordinator. And also, Linda Davis is Vice President of Manatee County National Alliance on Mental Illness. Welcome, everyone. I'm so happy that you're here with us today. Thank you. Um, as we get to know you and your work here in Manatee County, would you please um, Talk a little bit with me about mental health and women's empowerment. This year we are uh, talking about empowerment and defining it in a way of breaking down barriers for women so that they can be and do all those things that they want to be and be able to do. So to start, how is a woman's sense of empowerment connected to her mental health? Anyone? <laughs> <laughs> I believe there's a strong association between um, empowerment and uh, mental health of a woman. Um, uh, if a woman has a strong uh, self-esteem and confidence, she will project that at work and with her relationships. Um, conversely, if she's depressed and uh, she w might be withdrawn from the community and um, might not be empowered um, to have good relationships at her job or, um, or um, with other people. Yeah, and I kind of echo um, uh, what Dr. Swanson said as well in terms of you have to have a strong sense of self and being and confidence to be able to interact with other people, feel confident about your, your views, and so you can be heard, as you mentioned, in terms of empowerment, and to be able to do that and feel that you're being successful, whatever you define as success. Right. Um, so. I agree, and I would add to that that nutrition and exercise are very important for a woman as far as maintaining her sense of empowerment. It's part of that empowerment program to be eating healthily and exercising. Great. I think the only thing I would add is that when an individual is first diagnosed with a mental illness, usually after a period of, of symptomatic, um, you know, of symptoms, um, that individual has lost control of her life, or his life, but in this case, of her life. And um, this makes it extremely difficult to uh, get that control back, to figure out how to do it with all of the other issues that, are, that relate to having a serious mental illness. Right. Let's go back a little bit and, and find out more about you and where you work and what you do in relation to mental health in our community. Would you like to start, Linda? Sure. Um, I did not uh, become involved with mental illness by choice. Uh, 14 years ago, my then 19-year-old son um, was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia, and I had no choice. And. Uh, Shortly after he became stabilized, I uh, decided that the things that I had been able to do for him, the resources that I had scrounged to find, and the um, knowledge that I was able to find up the computer, and uh, there were, that there were an awful lot of others out there 
who, whose uh, loved ones did perhaps not have that advantage. And um, that's when I decided to become uh, fully involved with NAMI, which is what we call the National Alliance on Mental Illness. And um, I've been doing that for 13 and a half years now. Great. We certainly do appreciate all of the efforts of the volunteer community for our mental health issues. Thank you. Susan, tell us a little bit about your involvement. I work for the employees of Manatee Glands. I am their wellness coordinator. So I basically help the people who take care of the mentally ill take care of themselves is what I do. So I provide nutrition, education, uh, uh, inf health information, um, so that the, it empowers them to be, live more healthily. Great. Kind of walking the talk. Yes. <laughs> Super. Yeah. Melanie? Um, and I obviously work for Manatee Glens, who's the Baylor Health Service Provider for our community as a treatment provider, um, providing services for mental health and addiction services. Um, and yeah, we have a specialty hospital and outpatient practice, um, providing therapy, case management, counseling services, physician services, psychiatry, um, and, and other things. So. Great. And Susan, in your practice as an OBGYN, what is your involvement with mental health issues in women? Um, as an OBGYN physician, I treat women of all ages, um, from puberty to menopause and beyond. Um, so I see a variety of mental health issues, um, including depression, anxiety, postpartum depression. Um, and we also treat women who have been sexually abused, raped, or had issues with domestic violence. Uh, let's see if among you we can determine what the prevalence is among women health or women in terms of mental illness and substance abuse disorders in our community. Do we have any idea of what kind of uh, uh, mental health prevalence there is in relation to issues with women? I have a few statistics okay. if you want them. Great. Um, One percent of the population, and I would assume that that includes Manatee County as a smaller mm -hmm. uh, group, is, uh, has been diagnosed or is suffering from a severe and persistent mental illness, uh, most particularly schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. However, depression, um, one out of every five women suffer from a depressive uh, episode at one time or another compared to one out of two men. And of those women, um, probably about 25% of them um, do not receive any psychiatric help. Okay, anybody else have any experience with the prevalence? Yeah, well, I think like Linda said, I mean, it's yeah, a pretty high prevalence, and I think we could say as, as the treating provider um, for mental health and addiction services in Manatee County, we definitely see, if not, the standard national rates, but if not higher, especially in our community with um, drug addiction and pain, medication um, issues and concerns, and people with added stresses of the economy and life and financial stressors that have occurred. So I think we've seen that obviously continue to increase and obviously affect our community just as much as other folks. Um, there are also yeah. uh, certain diagnoses that are gender specific. Uh, to a large degree. Uh, borderline personality d disorder um, has a 75% female orientation. And um, unfortunately, it's also one of the most difficult to treat and has the most uh, co-occurring um, disorders, such as eating disorders um, and depression and bipolar disorder. And Susan, did you have something to add? Yes, I was going to say that 70% of the women who or have issues with substance abuse also have eating disorders. So it kind of goes hand in hand with the, um, the substance abuse. In fact, sometimes when a person has overcome substance abuse, they'll transfer that abuse or that addiction onto food. And in terms of de different mental health concerns for women across age spans, are there differences? And if so, what are they? Um, I think that there are, are differences through a woman's life stage. Um, 
when we see adolescents in the practice, um, a lot of the mental health concerns that they're expressing are anxiety and depression, um, usually a, due to hormonal changes of puberty. Um, when a woman is of a reproductive age, um, depression can also be an issue as well, especially postpartum depression. We see a lot of that in our practice. Um, about 10 to 15 percent of women have that problem, and that can occur from the age from when the infant is born to about a year afterwards. Um, and then in later lifestyles, uh, menopause, of course, can cause issues with hot flashes, night sweats, irritability, and emotional changes with hormonal um, changes. And um, because the woman is not sleeping, due to the hot flashes, she can have insomnia, which can lead to depression and anxiety. So there can be definitely different um, mental health issues that occur throughout their lifespans. Mm -hmm. And we see very much the same when um, people are coming in to get treatment services. They're usually complaining one of the things that brings them in is they're having difficulty sleeping, they're not sleeping as normal, they're not enjoying regular activities, um, their appetite's changing, mm -hmm. whether they're not eating or they're increasing their eating, they're not able to enjoy being social or going out or enjoying time with friends or family. So their life changes are happening. And so, yeah, you see that at different stages and sometimes during adolescence, some people might say, oh, well, young kids, they sleep a lot or as you get older, you need less sleep. Um, and so sometimes they might get written off, but mm -hmm. uh, they do definitely change over um, the age um, and things you're going through, both physically as well as socially or emotionally or relationships. So. I think nutritionally our issues change as we go through different life stages, you know. Um, you know, reproductive nutrition is very important, at that, you know, feeding your family. There's a lot of issues, concerns about that that usually like many times falls on a woman's shoulders, feeding the family. Um, re, you know, going through menopause weight gain at that period and as we grow older we all and changes in our health there are nutritional concerns so it, it uh, throughout the life cycle there is a need for more health education and it very changes as we grow as we grow, change and grow mm -hmm. I think pregnancy presents a, a particular um, concern that is obviously only with women and that is that <laughs> <laughs> that is that um, if a woman um, has been diagnosed with a mental illness and has been put on a medication regimen, uh, the minute she becomes pregnant, then um, she needs to work very closely with her doctor because um, some of the medications are contraindicated. Uh, and we all know that from the recent uh, ambulance chasing doctors or uh, lawyers who are saying if you took Paxil or if you took Zoloft. Um, so I think that's a, a particular concern. Um, Absolutely. I mean, we try to work with the women about getting them off their medications, but some women sure. need to be on the medications mm -hmm. during pregnancy um, to keep them stable. Um, but we work with counseling and other methods, you know, maybe massage or counseling or some other um, entities to try to help them through uh, difficult the times. Time. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Right. Another uh, women's uh, health issue that I would like to address um, is the, um, the woman as the caretaker. And there's a reason why most of us in NAMI are called NAMI mommies. <laughs> and at any given support meeting that we have, if there are 20 people there, 17 of them are uh, women and 15 of them are mothers. And usually this has occurred, the experience with a mentally ill loved one, occurs just as we're saying, Whew, and move to Florida and retire and move to Florida. <laughs> and then all of a sudden uh, we're faced with the responsibility. And um, I think it is very difficult for many women um, to deal with it and to deal with uh, their spouses sometimes and certainly dealing with the other family members siblings, for instance, a tremendous amount of the weight uh, falls onto um, the mother's shoulders. And that cannot help but affect her health as well. Mm -hmm. That's true. So the caregiving that women 
typically are in the role of doing mm -hmm. yes. is even heightened when there's mental health issues among her children or her spouse or people that she cares about. Particularly her children. Mm -hmm. Right. True. And then with yeah. our being in that sandwich generation, as they call us now, with our aging parents and mm -hmm. our, our children at the same time and the mental health issues that could be occurring on both ends of that spectrum mm -hmm. could really mm -hmm. add to our burden. Yeah. Um, what other kind of resources might there be for a woman who's feeling the pressure of caring for someone with a mental health problem? What uh, yeah. resources yeah. for them? Mm -hmm. uh, NAMI, mm -hmm. my organization, <laughs> <laughs> is focused entirely on the family. Yeah. We do have a, an emergency financial assistance program to help the mentally ill individuals, but our meetings, particularly our support meeting, which is the second Monday of each month, is only for family members. And um, that is a tremendous resource. Um, if possible, very often I think they need individual therapy as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I, I work also mm. with Healthy Start of Manatee County, and they provide um, not only nutrition counseling for pregnant women and, t and for their children up to the age of two, but they also provide mental health counseling. So that's a resource for young mothers. And how would one access that? They just need to contact um, Healthy Start of Manatee. Um, their office is on Manatee Avenue on the corner of 25th. Um, also, uh, women who go to Dr. Swanson's office, there is someone there who is working for Healthy Start who helps their patients. So it's a wonderful resource for the women of Manatee County who are having children at this point and for their children up to the age of two. So that is a resource there. Mm -hmm. And it costs them, you nothing. Yeah, most of the resources are free. Yeah. Which mm -hmm. is great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And NAMI is free. Yes. <laughs> great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wonderful resources. Let's talk about how trauma plays a part in women's mental health and what the prevalence is of these types of mental health issues having to do with sexual abuse, violence, death, divorce, these big earth-shaking kinds of, of life activity that could cause a, quite a bit of trauma for a woman. Uh, what kind of prevalence is there in that in your practices and in your volunteer organization in terms of your helping women in those situations? Um, I know in the United States it's about one in five women who are either raped or sexually assaulted. Um, we don't see that much in the practice, but it might be that a woman might not want to discuss that um, at her visit uh, with us. But of course, uh, trauma does have a great impact on a woman's mental health. Um, it could lead to substance abuse, it could lead to depression, anxiety, um, difficulties with work relationships, um, relationships with spouses or with other uh, members of the family. Um, it, I think, and also it causes issues with uh, chronic pain problems. Mm -hmm. We see women with chronic pelvic pain uh, that will not go get better despite medication or therapy and it might be due to um, a history of sexual abuse in the past. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's especially important to, I'm glad we're talking about trauma, I know that's kind of a big buzzword right now is trauma-informed care, um, but one of the biggest things with trauma is like as you mentioned is you know it's not only physical um, trauma or sexual abuse trauma, but the emotional trauma as well. People who could have been verbally abused for years or put down, um, talked down to, um, and for men and women, um, but obviously for women, they have a, a lot higher prevalence of post-traumatic stress disorder, which is PTSD. We see a lot more of that diagnosed in women. Um, and I mean, I think there's even stats that they're twice as likely to be diagnosed with anxiety, um, with post-traumatic stress from experiences that they occur. Um, and I think some of that too is how we're socialized as men and women in our society uh, um, and that it's okay, you know, for certain genders maybe to experience something or that we're told we kind of have to move on with it or as women as because we are caretakers, um, we kind of bear everybody's trauma or stresses sometimes and so that can um, add on layers. Another way of looking at it, um, the current medical uh, approach to mental illness is that um, there is a there are genes um, and uh, therefore people can be born with the gene that predisposes them that does not necessarily mean they develop a full-blown illness 
Um, so even though there is, uh, in many cases, a genetic component, uh, the environmental component, uh, which we refer to as triggers, um, are very often what sets somebody um, off into full-blown mental illness. And certainly, any one of these, uh, any sexual abuse, violence, death, divorce, um, could serve as that trigger, um, as can substance abuse issues, mm -hmm. um, which act as triggers. Now, my son had both the genetic component and uh, alcohol and marijuana as a teenager, and so <laughs> we know where it came from, mm -hmm. any and all of the above. So that's mm -hmm. another way of looking mm -hmm. at, the, um, mm -hmm. at some of these issues. And also, too, while well, a woman is pregnant, if her diet is less than optimum, uh, there's an increased risk of, say, schizophrenia. Um, looking at China in the, during the famine of 1959 to 61 and during World War II in Holland, the, during a time of famine, there is a greater increase of sch diagnosed schizophrenia. And so there's got to be a nutritional component if, when the baby is developing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about some proven treatment options for women. I guess it depends upon, um, you know, how old is the woman and what are her mental, her, her um, health problems, but anywhere from, if you're talking about depression and anxiety, anywhere from exercise um, to counseling um, to, um, if you're talking about a woman who's in menopause, um, there's vitamin therapy that could be helpful for hot flashes. Um, then there's medication, um, including antidepressants. Um, and then there's also alternative medicine, such as uh, acupuncture. Um, I guess it depends upon what disorder you're talking about and how old the woman is and what she's uh, willing to try. Mm -hmm. On the positive side, the medications um, are improving mm -hmm. all the time. And most of the medications uh, that are being developed for any one of the major uh, mental illnesses, uh, tries to aim for the greatest efficacy with the s um, smallest um, or the least side effect profile. This is an issue for women, though, mm -hmm. because many of the medications used for bipolar disorder have weight gain, hair loss, mm -hmm. and um, many, many, many women just stop taking mm -hmm. their medication. But there's hope because there are new ones all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which yep. goes back to the diet and the yes. nutrition yes. aspects. Yeah. Yes, and encouraging, does. I think, folks that if one thing doesn't work, that there's it's not, else. yeah, that there is something for everybody. And sometimes it's a mixture of a variety of things. You know, we're always encouraging folks that um, if it's depression and anxiety, that it's alongside with any medication, but, but therapy, you know, because um, some of them necessarily can be short term usage as well as looking at other alternative medicines and what works for them. Mm -hmm. You know, it may be somebody that enjoys exercise and getting outside mm -hmm. and cooking, and that may be the difference for some, some people. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's really true. individualized. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have other suggestions or recommendations uh, for women regarding optimum mental health? How do we achieve optimum mental health? Keeping busy, uh, which is very difficult for a, an individual um, with a serious mental illness because employment is an issue. Um, if you have bipolar disorder, you're great when you're manic and you're not there when you're depressed. Um, and any one of the illnesses has has difficulties like that. But there are, there are programs at the Women's Resource Center for Women. The Volunteers of America have a drop-in center that's called the Lifelong Learning Center. Mm -hmm. And they have programs five days a week, uh, along with groups. Okay, and we're just about mm -hmm. to use up our time. Any other suggestions for optimum mental health among women? Get help. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Reach out. Talk yeah. To your physician. Be Talk social. To yeah. Get yeah. yeah. counseling. Communicate. Communicate. Yeah. Eat your fruits and vegetables. <laughs> Meat, <laughs> whole grains. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> All right. <laughs> healthy, healthy fats. <laughs> Those, that's important too. Right, and they're all good mm -hmm. common sense, and they're the things we ought to do for ourselves. Yeah. So in closing, I thank our panelists for participating in our Women's Issues Forum on Mental Health and Women's Empowerment. 
We appreciate your candor and your knowledge. A special thanks to AAUW member Faye Murphy, who directed this forum. In closing, these four experts and other knowledgeable people and agencies are available in our community. If you need their services, please seek the level of service that helps you enhance your empowerment and maintain optimum mental health. If you would like more information, please send an email to manatiaauw at hotmail.com. We would love to hear from you. The next forum in our series will focus on finance and women's empowerment. From the Manatee County branch of AAUW, thank you for being with us and thank you for tuning in to Women's Issues Forums focusing on women's empowerment. Our voices will be heard.